Most people don't have a problem understanding the three tier or the N tier architecture. So after a few years of software development, you start looking at other architectures and trying to understand that. You end up on onion or clean architecture and the knowledge gap between the three tier or the N tier architecture and the onion architecture, for example, is just ridiculous. There seems to be no gradual increase in knowledge for software architecture for developers. It's either really simple or really complicated. I find that it, developers that aren't experienced will often not have enough knowledge about the individual topics or the individual terms mentioned in any of these explanations to grasp the overarching uh, issue that these uh, software architecture patterns are trying to solve. So in this video, I wanna address some of the key points and terms that you are probably missing that once you know, will hugely elevate your understanding of software architecture in general. First of all, let's speak about the layers in any of these diagrams. So originally, these diagrams were thought of as tiers, which originally was where an application is physically hosted. Modern day architectural diagrams, the layers relate to the functionality a particular piece of code or performs. Architectural patterns these days is all about keeping functionality separate. The other thing that's worth mentioning is every one of these uh, tutorials or explanations you look at, the person giving that explanation is completely overgeneralizing that explanation. When you look at software architecture, you've got an idea in mind of the, your application you're busy building or you're going to be building or you're modifying. That person giving the explanation is trying to think of all the hundreds of types of application out there that it could, it could solve. They have to keep the explanation super general. And because of that, that adds to the confusion and the complexity. Being aware of this fact will help you realize that the, the architecture is not a rule it's not hard and fast. It's just a guideline. It's just a guideline to fit and, and put in and, and mold to how it fits with your application. And to go along with this, be aware that the jargon and the terminology will be completely different from person to person and team to team. A lot of these explanations in the diagram may refer to the domain model. Some may refer to data transfer objects, DTEs or models or entities or POCO classes. They all mean the same thing. In that case, all of those just relate to simple, plain, common objects that represent a record in the database that happens, has no functionality whatsoever. It's really just there to store data and move it around. Similar to the term infrastructure, these explanations refer to talk about infrastructure everyone could be meaning different things. We know what infrastructure is in the real world. It's a physical thing that assists the functioning of society. So it's bridges and roads and electricity. It's, it's the structural things that, that help society work. So in, in software, uh, infrastructure relates to all those pieces of code that will make the application as a whole work together, regardless of what your core problem is that you're trying to solve for the architecture. So infrastructure could be how you save data. Do you save it to a database? Do you save it to the file system? Um, how you access net, the network? How you handle errors for your application? How you send messages from your application to another part of your application? It is, it is the overall structure for common tasks that your entire application is going to use. That's what's meant by infrastructure. Business logic is another one that some people actually get confused, uh, especially new developers. They're like, what is business logic? If you've got a piece of code that's sitting in your controller, at what what point does that code need to, which part of that code needs to be moved out to a separate layer, business logic layer, or should it stay in the, what code should stay in the controller? At first, this question can be quite difficult to grasp. Domain logic, business logic, business rules, domain rules, they all mean the same thing. It is any piece of code that relates to the industry that you're writing the software for. It's code that you write that is that relates to the rules about the specific problem you're trying to solve. Let's say you had an application that issues driver's licenses. If you are issuing driver's licenses, 
at some point you would probably have a rule to say that a driver's license can only be issued to someone who's over the age of 18 or over the age of 16 depending on where you live that's a business rule that is specific to your licensing application then when it comes to the outermost layer in these uh, circular diagrams this can be also confusing because a lot of this will speak about a view or user interface which is often the same thing uh, or it could relate to a web API or it could relate to a unit test what this really means is it is the person or the application or the thing that is using or consuming your business rules so let's go back to the driver's license scenario if someone hits the submit button on on a form on your web page that layer would relate to the UI and then you could be sending posting that request and have that process your business rules which checks the age of the individual but you could also have a scenario where where your unit test is written and that is validating those business rules so it is running those business rules codes and checking that they work that means it's your unit test that's using the business rules or if you had an API that is being exposed to the outside world that API is using those business rules so that would sit on the out of layer the biggest thing that all these architectural patterns are trying to deal with is there's two real concepts the one is separation of concerns which is all about keeping those layers separate so that you don't have the code intermingled between both of them you don't have your code that actually your HTML code that has the text box you don't have that mixed in with your business logic with the code that validates whether that person's date of birth is or that person is old enough uh, to to drive a car the idea is to have that separate so that you can make changes to one without affecting the other you have a particular section of code only dealing with the functionality that it is responsible for the other big concepts that these architectural patterns are dealt with is the dependencies these are always indicated by arrows with the direction of the arrow being important about which layer depends on which layer the actual reason these architectural explanations don't make a lot of sense is because in all honesty they don't have to these aren't absolute hard and fast rules that you have to use for coding you don't have to make sure your code fits into the perfect layer every time what you should understand though is the problems that these architectural patterns are trying to solve and then it's up to you to implement which bits of those patterns to solve your particular problems if they're the same as these ones so what you really should be doing is focusing on how to write cleaner code every time you write code so next you should watch this video on how to write more structured code